Okay, so you've got your X-Carve Pro put together. You've gone through all the steps. Everything is good to go. The next step is to walk through a really simple project to see how this machine actually works in terms of the software easel and how that relates to actually getting a project done. So to do that, we are going to jump into easel. You can see I just have a blank project pulled up right here. I'm just gonna call this demo project. Hit close. And we're gonna do a really easy two-stage carve just so you can see what the process is of carving the first stage, changing out the bits, and then carving the second stage. Now to do that, we are gonna add in some text real quick. And this really is just going to be a really fast test carve. Uh, and I'm actually going to be using uh, this piece of maple. This is six inches by 12 inches by three quarters of an inch. So one of the first things you want to do, so we want to adjust our workpiece as a result. So I'm gonna come up here to our material. It already is at 12 inches, but I wanna make sure my length is six and I set my thickness to 0.75 inches. And you can see that I have the uh, XY0 set to the front left corner, meaning when I actually do my carve, right here will be my XY0. You also have the option of setting that to the center. So you could center this on your machine, zero everything to the center, and then carve it out from there. That's really helpful if you have really big pieces. Uh, but with our setup, we're just going to do the front left corner, and you'll see what that actually looks like the zero here in a second. All right, I am going to center this on the material. So I am going to uh, move this around and then I'm actually going to center this to the material. So I'm going to use the shape menu to do that. You can see you have this position command where you have all of these different points that you can select. This is the position of this entire text, so this text carve. And right now it's telling us that this front left corner is at 1.8 or is at 1.3 in the X and 2.7 in the Y. So like 1.3 in the X, 2.7 in the Y. Uh, but I actually want this to be in the very center. The easiest way to do do that is to actually select the center point, which will be right here in the very center of this box. And we know half of our X will be six, since this is 12 inches wide, half of that is going to be six. That's gonna move that to the center. And then half of six will be three. So if we hit that to three, and then our piece is aligned to the very center. Now we are gonna go super deep into all the tools that Easel has that helps you to create your artwork. We have a lot of other tutorials on our website as well as videos that walk you through that. So these are the super basics that we're gonna kinda of go through here pretty quick. Now, once we have everything set up in terms of our shape, our next step is to look at our cut. Specifically, how deep do we want this cut to go? I am going to keep this uh, pretty easy. So we're gonna keep this at 0.2 inches and I want my cut path to clear out the pocket. If I change this to cut on the shape, you can see we're gonna get a outline of the text. And then depending on where you want that outline to occur, you can do it on the inside of the line or the outside of the line, you'll get different effects. For us, we're gonna clear out the pocket. And you might notice right off the bat that we're not getting the full text with that. And that has to do with our next step, which is setting the bit that we want to use with that. So we have our art piece, we have the shape defined how we want it, we have the cut set how we want it, so the cut depth. Our next step is then to come up to the top. We already have our material set. And actually, I do need to switch this over to soft maple. This will have to do with our cut settings here in a minute. And then we wanna select our bit. I'm gonna be using two different bits because I wanna use one thicker bit to get out the majority of that text fill. And then I wanna use a second V-carve bit that is going to be my detail bit that will allow me to get everything that I miss. So first we are going to set up our bit and we're gonna be using a quarter inch up cut bit. I'm gonna select that. And you can see even when I do that, now the amount that I have is even less than I had before. Uh, we are gonna make this just a little bit bigger and to scale this so I don't move it off the center, I'm actually holding uh, option on a Mac and I'm scaling this up. And then I'm going to add another bit. And this time this is going to be a 60 degree V bit. So I'm gonna select this guy right here. And then to add an additional bit, all you do is hit this plus right here. And then you can get to a 60 degree V bit as your option. And then you can see once we do that, now we are getting that nice carved effect. And this preview is actually super helpful as well. I'm already telling this is actually gonna be a lot deeper than I really want it to be. So I'm going to adjust this. I'm gonna select it again, go to my cut, and I'm just gonna go just down to an eighth of an inch. So I'm just gonna select an eighth, or you can type in 0.125, and you can see we get that effect 
right there. Now it's given us an estimate at the bottom for both our roughing and our finishing pass to get a firm estimate of how long this is actually going to take. You just hit simulate. And ESA will do all the math to actually figure out the tool pass and you're gonna get a really good idea of how long this is going to take. Now actually when I do that simulation, if I run this, you can see we only are using the V-carve bit, so we're not using our thicker bit. And that's because the text is thin enough that the quarter inch bit actually won't get in there. So one thing you can definitely do is play around with the bits and the bit sizes to get something that is going to work for you. So if we do it right now, it's going to take basically 17 minutes to do the entire operation. Now, if I switch this over to an eighth inch bit and I hit simulate, you can see we go down to nine minutes. And that's because not only are you seeing that green tool path, you're also seeing a red tool path. And that red tool path, which is going right now, this is our eighth inch bit. So it's able to clear out a little bit of the material. So we're gonna use an eighth inch end mill as well as a 60 degree V bit. Now one thing going back to the bits, you can see I probably have a good number of bits potentially compared to what yours looks like. So this all has to do with your bits and materials toolbox. So these are all of the upcut and the straight cut bits that I have as well as the different V carve bits that I have in there. Now if you want to adjust the ones to show what you actually have in your shop, you can come up here to the toolbox and then you can come in here and add additional bits or remove bits depending on what your situation is. If you just hit add bits, you can either choose bits that come directly from us, so you guys can search for them right there, or you can go in and you can do a custom bit. And here you would just type in your name, the bit type, and you can go from there to get everything set up. In addition to the bits, we also have our materials, so you can set in different materials. You can have different cut settings as well as different machine profiles. So if you guys have multiple machines, you can set up different profiles. So then you have different bits and materials and cut settings that show up individually with those as well. All right, so then coming all the way over to the far right, we have our cut settings. I'm gonna keep this on automatic, but you definitely can switch this over to manual as you do some tests. You can kind of see which ones work the best for you. And just like you saw with the toolbox, we have custom cut settings. So if you do make an adjustment to these cut settings and you go all the way through a carve, you can actually save that to a custom cut setting in the future if that's a setting you think that's gonna work better for you. But right now we're gonna use our automatic. So on our roughing, which again is our eighth inch bit, we're gonna be running in at 128 inches per minute, uh, 38 inches per minute plunge rate, and then 0.125 on our depth per pass, which is also the width of the bit. That's usually kind of standard with how we have things set up with a spindle speed of 1600. And then on our detail side of things, you can see those as well. Now we're not gonna play around with our fill method, but you can see with our plunge, we already have a 20 degree plunge set up for our eighth inch bit. And basically all that means instead of carving straight down when it starts a cut, it's gonna come down at an angle. This helps to give you a nicer cut as well as reduce the wear and the tear on your bit. So normally you wanna use a plunge. You could also use a plunge for our V bit, but a lot of times with the V bits, you don't have to really do that as much because they're already kind of shaped like a ramp anyway when you're plunging into your material. All right, so now that we have everything set up, we are going to move to the actual machine. Now, the very first thing you have to do with your machine is actually make sure it is connected. So if I unplug it, you can see that my carve button went to blue. If I plug it in, it's going to turn green. Now, when you click on that carve menu, it's going to ask you to home your machine. This is gonna happen anytime you turn your machine off. And it's a really good practice to always home your machine, especially when you're doing two stage carves like we are doing. So we're gonna go ahead and home the machine. And I'm just making sure everything is out of the way and this will be fine. And all it's doing is moving to the furthest forward and then the furthest left point on this machine using the limit switches that we have set up. Also the Z axis is gonna come all the way up to the top as well so that it knows where the zero point is on all of those axes. All right, so now that we have it zeroed, the next step is to move to the material. First, it's going to ask for our material thickness. Uh, we're gonna put in 0.75 inches. This is also the same amount that we had earlier, but one good practice to always do as well is to measure it with calipers to get the exact thickness. This is especially true if you're going to be cutting through your material. You wanna make sure you know that exact thickness so that it knows how far to go to get it all the way through. All right, so we're gonna hit confirm material thickness. The next thing is we are going to clamp down our material. So to do that, we're gonna use a combination of our TE track clamps, doing your best to make sure everything stays square. And then we're gonna use some of our other clamps that can go into our threaded inserts. So 
So now we've got this clamp down and I'm trying my best to keep this front left corner open a little bit just so that we can zero our X and a Y here in a second. So moving on to our next step, it's gonna ask us which pass we wanna do. In this case, it is going to be the roughing pass. We're gonna hit continue. It's the one to confirm the bit that you are using. Now we could put the bit in already, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I actually forgot it. So let me grab my bit. And then using our 17 and our 22 millimeter wrench. All right, we're going to confirm our bit size. And now we are going to find our work zero position. So we are gonna be using our Z probe. So we're gonna select our Z probe. And then first it wants us to jog the machine over the material. So I am selecting my jog controls, which is over on the right side. You can see you have different intervals. You have an X and a Y interval as well as a Z interval. And normally you wanna keep your Z less than your X and the Y, just because as you're moving this, it's a lot easier to go further in your Z where you go into your material. So keep that smaller, uh, but the X and Y, you can move that faster just because you have a bigger work area to move with. So you can use the commands up here to move the machine around or you can use your arrow keys, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm just getting it over the material and then I'm going to drop it down. You can hold shift down. And I am just going to ballpark it where I'm basically trying to get this in this front left corner right here. This one doesn't have to be exact in terms of the X and the Y. And then the Z, it's gonna get here in just one second. I've got it pretty close. Now I'm just gonna move this to the right an inch and then up to an inch, just to give me a little bit more room to use my Z probe and then raise it up. So at this point I can confirm my position. Then I'm going to plug in my lead into my HMI. So that's going to be this guy right here. Then I'm going to attach my clip. I'm gonna to touch this to the bit so it makes a connection. And then I'm going to start probing. And then now it stores the Z position. And then we're gonna take all of this back off. And then since I moved this an inch in both the Y and the X, I can actually get it back to the original position really quick. So down, left, and that is my X, Y, zero. So at this point, I'm going to set my X, Y, zero. And this is going to be the same X, Y, zero between your roughing and your detail pass. And we'll show you how to use that in a second once we do our first operation. So I hit next. Now I'm not actually going to connect the dust shoe, but if you did, it's just gonna drop in right there. You would have to raise this up a little bit to be able to get it in and then it can drop back down. But just so you can see what's going on, I'm gonna leave this removed. So I'm gonna hit skip. I'm gonna turn on the spindle. At this point, our spindle is on. Scroll on down and then hit carve. So our first stage is done, but it actually didn't take super long because the majority of this carve is actually gonna happen with the detail bit, which is what we're going to move on to next. So I'm gonna exit out of this, and here I am going to put in my next bit. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna raise up my bit. So I'm gonna come up here to the jog menu up here on the top right, and then I am going to move the Z up some. And then I'm going to insert my V bit and I wanna basically go as far in as I can with just the cutting bit pushing out. It's gonna give you the most stability. Now, when I was doing that, I was trying to be pretty careful to not actually physically move the machine. The x -Car Pro is pretty robust. So it actually is pretty hard to get this thing to move in the X and the Y and especially the Z. But just to be safe, a good practice is to always rehome your machine between cuts. So I'm gonna come back up here to this menu, hit home. It's gonna go through the home process again. And then from here, we can go back through our carve menu. So I'm gonna come up here to carve. Material thickness hasn't changed. The material is secure. Make sure and select the detail pass. We are not doing the roughing pass anymore. We're gonna using our 60 degree V bit. Both bit sizes are correct. And then now we are going to have to reprobe because as we changed out our bits, the distance between those bits to the work surface is going to change, but our X and our Y zero is not going to change. So we will need to reprobe. So again, I am going to jog this over the machine and then I'm gonna plug everything back in. I'm gonna hit confirm position, clip is attached, touch the plate, start the probe. 
Now, unlike before, we don't have to move this to this front left position because we already have our X, Y, zero saved. So I'm gonna hit Z probe is put away and then use last X, Y, zero. This is what lets you do the two stage cuts and it's gonna know exactly where to go as before. So use X, Y, zero, even though it's not in the X, Y, zero currently. Again, we're skipping our dust shoe, turning our spindle on, and we are starting our carve. And then once the carve is done, we have completed our two-stage carve operation. Now, a few things to keep in mind. First, you don't have to immediately do your finishing carve. You can actually come back later, whether it's even the next day. Just make sure you rehome your machine, use that last X, Y, zero save to position, and then you're good to go. So don't feel like you have to do all this in one step. Now, this process is pretty much exactly the same process you would use if you're using 3D carving, where you'll definitely be doing a roughing pass first to be able to take out the majority of the material. Then you'll be coming back with some type of V or rounded bit in order to do your final detail pass. So at this point, you have your X-Carve Pro set up. You've done a test project. You are good to go to start making your own things. Now, there's a good chance you might run into a problem in the future. Be sure and check out our forums to see if there's other people that have run into your situation. Or as always, you can reach out directly to us at this email as well as through our website. All right, we can't wait to see the products that you make as well as the businesses you build with Invenables.